Yo, yo, good morning, Inspired Church family. Welcome into the house of God this morning. It is so good to see you guys in the house of the Lord this morning. And to every single online viewer, good morning to you guys as well. Uh, if you wasn't here last service, the Spirit of the Lord moved like never before. It was crazy in here. We have Prophet Lloyd Buster here this morning with a mighty word from God. So strap your seatbelts on. You know what? No, no seatbelts. Take them off. I don't want anything to hold you back from pressing into what the Lord has for you this morning. So this morning, press in and give God all that you have this morning. And don't forget, at 6 o'clock today, we have our worship encounter. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be a mighty move of God. So this morning, let us go into prayer as we get ready to worship. Father God, here we are this morning, God. We come hungry this morning. We come thirsty, God, for your presence, God, to be where you are, Lord God. We want more of you this morning, Father. So have your way in this place, Lord God. We decrease, God, and we ask you to increase, Lord God. We, Father God, we say have your way, Father. Move in our lives this morning, Father God. Break every chain, Father. Break every wall, Father God. Break, uh, Father, us this morning, God, to be humbled in your presence, God, to have our hearts open before you, Father God, and say fill us up, Lord, with your Holy Spirit, God. We want an inheritance from you, Lord God. So have your way this morning, Father God. Move Move like never before, Father God. Let worship arise. God, let our lives change for the glory of the Lord. King of kings, have your way this morning. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. God bless you guys. Good morning, Inspire Church. Good morning. You ready to praise God? Let's go. Put your hands together. Lead us, lead us. 
little bit louder. Sing it, say, sing it, say. Sing it out, say. Is it true? Do you believe it? Sing it louder in hell. I am free. I am free. Sing it, say. Hell wants another one. Whom the sun says free is free indeed. fills the room. The more you sing unto God, the more joy fills the room. Listen, there are people in here, a little bit lower because I'm yelling. There are people in here who came in heavy. And the word of God says that he inhabits the praises of his people. So we one plus one makes two. Everybody here is in at one accord. Now, if you're not, I need you to switch. Why? Because there is not just you. There are more people in this room that have been going through depression. They've been carrying heavy weights. So when we praise, we release an atmosphere in the room for everybody. Because if he touches one, he touches all. So shake your neighbor this morning. Tell him, get out that crave. Shake your other neighbor. Say, get out that crave. Now, it doesn't mean that you're dead. It may mean you feel that they're just shifted. Say again, say, get out that grave. Say your spirit, get out that grave. And we say, get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. In the back. All the way to the rising sea. You know you can have fun in this presence, right? Say, get up out of that. Get up out of that grave. Oh, thank you, Jesus.
coffee, espresso you could ever take. Some of you, you needed that this morning. So lift up your hands to the Father. He's forever Yahweh. He's forever good. His mercy endures forever. There's no ending to his love, so there should be no ending to our gratitude. So right here in your own way, just lift up a song of gratitude. Great and 
worship team is just to lead you to his presence and we get out of the way and right now you've entered into a place where it's just you and him so in his presence there's fullness of joy there's pleasures forevermore so ask what you need right now this is your moment to captivate him turn your eyes turn your affection towards him 
You have his attention. All you can ask, think, or imagine. Cause you that are exploding in this place. While they're here at the altar this morning, and many are listening from around the world, how many of you know that something supernatural can happen in this room? Because we are declaring that he alone is worthy. He alone is worthy. Can we go before the throne of grace this morning? I'm just... And I ask that you that are here, that you just bow your heads and close your eyes. And Father, we pull on the Holy Spirit this morning. We thank you, God, that before we get out our want list, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Even when we did not deserve it, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your protection over our lives, Lord Jesus, that all this week you protected us. Thank you that nothing happened in our homes, Lord God, that our children returned to us safely. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you that you kept my mind stayed on you, Lord God. Thank you that you didn't let my tongues utter some things that shouldn't have been uttered, Lord God. Thank you that you were sustaining me, Father, that you kept me in a righteous and a holy place. Thank you this morning, God, that you have brought me to a place where I can freely worship you this morning. And so God, thank you. But because we are thankful, God, we're not gonna be surprised by the things that we, you do when we ask you to do a thing. So Father, thank you that we stand under an open heaven, Lord God. We thank you that blessings overflow us, Lord God. We thank you that when we open up our mouths and we talk about the people that are on the screen and we ask you to heal them, God, we're not gonna be surprised at the miracles that's gonna happen because we are asking you to heal them to the utmost, Lord God. We're not gonna be surprised when they come in this building with a testimony that says, I was in the hospital, but now I'm out of the hospital. I had sickness and disease, but now I don't have sickness and disease. And we, the ones that have been praying for them, we will celebrate with a loud voice and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, we're not gonna be surprised when promotions come our way. We're not gonna be surprised when finances come our way. We're not gonna be surprised because we believe that you can do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we can ask or think. And so, Father, we bless you this morning. And we thank you, God, in Jesus' mighty name. And the saints of God said, amen, 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 amen. Well, I'm not gonna tell you to go back to your seat. 
I'm just going to say, before you sit down, fist pump somebody and say, don't be surprised at what God's going to do in here today. Come on, fist bump somebody else, tell them, don't be surprised at what God's going to do in here today. In fact, he may do it to you and you may jump up and shout and somebody else may jump up and shout right along with you. Amen? Good Lord. Whoosha. As the ushers are serving you, as the ushers are serving you, we want to welcome those that are worshiping with us online. Any first time guests that we have here this morning, can you just elevate your hand so that we can see you in the room? I'm looking, I'm looking. Any hand, there, there's young man right there, amen. Come on, Inspire, let's give him a great big welcome to Inspire, amen. If you're worshiping with us online, wherever you are, why don't you go into the chat box and just chat with us and tell us where you're listening from. We would love to know where you're listening uh, from around the world, amen. Just a couple of announcements for you. There are five ways to give. And uh, as you are giving, if you elevate your hand, the ushers will get an offering envelope into your hands. Uh, to the first time guests, those that you've visited with us, right outside this door, right by the cafe, if you'll stop by there, if you're a first time guest, we have a gift for you. I know pastor will be there. Some of the other pastoral team will be there. But we want to shake your hand and just welcome you to Inspire. So don't forget after the service to please stop by. Um, can I share a scripture with you real quick? Psalms 118 and 24. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Somebody say, in it. So as you are giving this morning, as you are giving, be glad that you are in today, amen? And God's got provisions for you in this day, amen? So you can give with a cheerful heart knowing that this is the day that the Lord has made and you are in this day. Somebody say, I'm glad I'm in here today. So if you have your offering envelope, hold it up. I got one last thing to say to you. This is prophetic encounter this morning, right? So we're pulling on heaven this morning, right? Lord Buster will be with us in just a few moments. Uh, but I said I gave a secret out in the first service. I'm gonna give it out this, mo this evening, this, this morning too, okay? Where you're sitting at 6 p.m. this evening, somebody may be in that seat. I'd come early if I were you. Say amen. amen. I would come early if I were you. We want to pull on heaven tonight, come together as a big worship family, be here at 6 p.m., and we're going to enjoy our time as we worship God together. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you so much for your rich blessings. We ask that you would bless this offering in Jesus' mighty name. Mark your calendars for March the 10th. Founder of Youth Reach will be here in all services. His name is Kirk Williams. He's going to be a great blessing to us. Bye. 
good to us, Jesus. You were so good to us, Jesus. You will never leave. forsaken God and you won't start now well, you won't start now you're too good to us far too good to not believe too good to not believe too good to not after everything I've seen, too good to not believe, too good to not believe, too good to not believe. After everything I've seen, come on, say, too good to not believe. Yes, you are. After Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. I see men in the direction. I see mental health restored. Don't you tell me. Another one is on the way. Miracles after miracles. 
Give God a shout of praise right now. Thank you, Father. There are some things we say because we've heard others say them. There are some things that we can assert and affirm with confidence because of the experiences that others have shared with us regarding those things. But when you sing, How Great Thou Art, you're singing from personal experience. And I wonder, is there anybody in this house that you know that God is great and great to be praised? 
and worthy of our adoration. Come on, let's give it up for the Lord. Let's worship Him. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Has God been good to anybody here? Did God do something for you that nobody else could have done? I know that he saved you. No one else could have done that. But has God been real to you in your everyday life and showed up when you needed God to show up to let you know that he cares for you? What a good God we serve. What an incredible God we serve. Amen. Forgive me. I'm overwhelmed when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. My soul cries out. Hallelujah. 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 Thank God for saving me. And good morning, Inspire. How are you today? Amen. God bless you. We have an exciting day that is still ahead of us. And um, I want to share just a few things with you. You've already heard the announcements, but I would like to point out a couple of things. We're in revival here at Inspire. We didn't plan it, God did. It just turned out this way. Jeremiah 5, the Lord said that I've appointed unto you, or reserved unto you the appointed weeks of harvest. We're in a harvest season right now. Uh, last Sunday, I watched the services from overseas. I thought that was incredible. What a word from God. The best explanation I've ever heard for God telling Moses, take your shoes off. You're home now, Moses. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I love that. And you're home here today too. Well, I was going to speak next Sunday. Today we have Prophet Lloyd Bustard with us, and this is the way it's going to work. Amen. Come on, give it up for Pastor Lloyd Bustard, our dear friend. An unusual gift to the body of Christ, one of the most accurate words of knowledge that I've ever seen. And um, Lloyd's going to be with us this morning to declare a word of God over our life. And this evening, there's been such a cry in the heart of this church for worship that we're coming back tonight and we're not bringing an outside guest in. Our worship team is going to lead us into the presence of God. And this entire evening is devoted to a worship encounter. So turn to somebody and say, encounter weekend, would you do that? Amen. A prophetic encounter this morning and then a word from God from Brother Lloyd Bustard, and then this evening, a worship encounter. And I was going to speak next Sunday, but if, have you ever heard of this African preacher named Tudor Bismarck? <laughs> Amen. Well, he sent me word he's going to be in town next Sunday, and I can't let him be here in service and not speak. So Bishop Tudor Bismarck will be in the house it's going to be an incredible time. And as I said, the Lord has designed all of this. And so God bless you. Thank you so much for being here. You may go back to your seats. I'm getting ready to introduce our guests. And I want to welcome all of our first-time attendees, wherever you may be in the auditorium. One of the things that I enjoy the most is meeting our guests at the end of a service. I hope I get a chance to meet you. We always go out to the lobby and there's a table set up. We have a gift for you. And uh, we would like to get to know you. Thank you for coming to worship with us. Thank you for our online church family, wherever they may be around the world. And uh, I want to recognize just real quickly uh, a couple of people who are in the building this evening. 
somebody that I go way, way back with, or this afternoon, uh, way back with, Brother Robert Filkins. You're in the house somewhere, I think. Where are you? Okay, D please stand. Amen. Former missionary, both to Africa and to France, an incredible man of God. Would you let him know we're glad you're here? Haven't even had a chance to shake his hand yet. Thank you, sir, for your years of service to the kingdom of God. A great preacher and um, would love for you to have a chance to hear him speak. If they would just let me know in time when you're coming in. Amen. And we also have other special folk in the building today with us. And I want to welcome Briscoe Kane and his beautiful wife, Burgundy. They are part of our political team here in the state of Texas and great believers and love God passionately. We're so happy they are here. Amen. They're making a difference with their lives. Would you please just one more time stand with me? And I want you to welcome the ministry gift who is with us here today. My friend for many years, Pastor Lloyd Bustard, Charlotte, North Carolina. Come and speak to us. Bring us the word of God. Thank you. Pam couldn't be here today, but pleasure. I think you're going to do a fantastic job ministering to the hearts of our people. I can't tell you what a joy it is to have you here. Oh, it's great to we be here. We love you. Think the world of you. Just One more time, let's welcome him and open our hearts. When I stand beside you, I just look at you and wish I had more hair. That man is the Clint Eastwood of the kingdom of God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hit me a chord. I love, I love Pastor Bishop, Dr. Richard Hurd and his incredible wife, Jerry. Uh, <laughs> Pam and I love you so much. This is our pastors. This is my pastor. And I love you and I appreciate you. And I honor you today, both of you. And to see what you're doing in this city, in this church. And see the next generation coming along. Pastor Andrew. And Andrew and I visited just, just between services. And all he talked about is this, this new generation, these 20 sums and these 30 sums and these teenagers. All he was talking about is what God's doing in the youth at Inspire. Man, I don't know what's going to happen. It's probably going to get a little funky in the Holy Ghost. Because I just turned to doctors and I said, man, there's a big anointing here. Oh, tis so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word and just to rest upon his promise just to know Thus says the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust you and how I've proved you all and all. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, you're my precious Jesus. Trust. Come on, lift your hands and sing it one more time. Jesus, 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 how I trust you and how.
for God today? Who's thirsty for a, an encounter in the Holy Spirit? Oh, for grace to trust Him. Oh, praise God. 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 Woo! Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Open blinded eyes, take tumors out of bodies, heals heart conditions. Just when you're in this presence, it's just like the day that Jesus was walking down the road and a, a blind man named Bartimaeus began to cry out, Jesus, have mercy on me, have mercy on me. And Jesus stops and says, go bring that blind man here. And they brought that blind man here Jesus said, what do you that I need to do for you? He said, Lord, that I might receive my sight. He said, go thy way. Your faith hath made you whole. You were healed when you cried out. See, you can be healed when you just say Jesus. You can be healed when you just say Jesus. You can be healed, delivered, miraculously changed. Whoa. worker is doing his work right now the miracle worker is doing his work I'm telling you I'm sensing this right now up in the balcony up in the bleachers if you need a miracle just lift your hands just like Bartimaeus and just say Lord I receive my miracle I receive my healing right now I know I won't get finished my sermon. I know that. God feels in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> but because something is going to take us to a different level here today. So, Father, I thank you for the anointing. The yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing. Wow. Man, thank you, Jesus. Vertical. 
Somebody just got healed of vertical, whatever that is, vertical something. Just Lord just said, I just healed somebody of Wow, thank you, Lord. All right, all right, be seated for a moment. You musicians stay here. Don't play anymore. Thank you. I love the spirit on this platform. Wow. I want to talk to you for a few moments. And just stay with me. James, if I start saying something that they don't know, be the vocal core chart. Because <laughs> you know what I sing. <laughs> The inheritance of revelation. I'm right at home right now. Royal families. Everybody say royal families. They take a great deal of effort to preserve and pass on their history. Why? Because they know that each individual of each royal generation will only understand his or her identity when they discover themselves at the end of the line of their royal ancestors who have already fulfilled their rule and reign. But here's this, one of the great secrets. When that royal son or daughter, when they find themselves at their place of royalty, that's when their life changes. Because from that day on, they will plan and make decisions during their lifetime that will continue the royal legacy because they realize it's not all about them. Amen. As believers, you and I have been grafted into the rich history of God's royal priesthood. And understanding history from God's perspective is such an important ingredient so we can define what our royal responsibilities are. The Bible is God's history book. It not only records the miracles and the acts and the interventions of God, but it records what they mean. For instance, in Genesis, God placed Adam and Eve in the garden, and he commanded them to be fruitful, multiply, subdue the earth, extend the borders of the garden. Because this is so important to understand. The nature of God's kingdom is increase. Everybody say, the nature of God's kingdom is increase. Increase, not decrease, not falling back, not compromising, increase. Isaiah 9 and 7 says, and of his, the increase of his government, there will be no end. The kingdom of God is always meant to advance us individually and corporately as God takes us from what Paul said, glory to glory. And when you understand the nature of the kingdom and the commission that God gave to Adam and Eve, it will become clear to you that God intended that his kingdom would be advanced with each succeeding generation. Each generation would increase in number as they were fruitful and multiplied. So what's the principle? The more believers you have, the more rulership and reign of God you have on the earth. Amen. Romans 14 and 28, in a multitude of witnesses or in a multitude of people is the king's honor. But in the lack of people is the downfall of a prince. So the key ingredient in this process of increase, listen to what I'm saying, the key ingredient in this process of increase is one word, inheritance. Inheritance. Inheritance is the link between generations. Inheritance is what each generation receives from the previous generation and they work their inheritance and make it grow so they can pass it on to the next. 
When one generation has been fruitful and faithful and multiplied, then the good news is about an inheritance, the next generation gets to start out ahead because of the inheritance that was passed on to them. You give, a, you give a young couple an inheritance, they're able to buy a car or a home quicker than they would have been able had they had to depend on their own income. So if it is by inheritance that is God's royal priesthood, his kingdom is advanced, then it's so important for you and I today at Inspire to understand and realize what we are responsible for. When you receive an inheritance, you are freely getting what someone else paid a price for. Inheritance makes each generation responsible to both receive and honor what has been passed on to them by the previous generation. And then they are responsible to take their inheritance and not be like the prodigal son and waste it, but invest it. Make it grow so that the next generation starts out ahead of where even they started out. Glory to glory, faith to faith. The ceiling of one generation must become the floor of the next generation. So in our lifetime, this requires you and I to act within an awareness that our actions do affect the generation that hasn't even come after us yet. And this is precisely the effect that righteousness, everybody say righteousness. This is exactly the effect that righteousness has on the way we think and the way we act and live. Proverbs 13 and 22. A good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. After God made his covenant with Israel, Moses declared this in Deuteronomy 29 and 29. The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever that we may do all the works of the law. Now say revelation. Think about that. Revelation. It just flows off your lips. Revelation. You know what revelation means? Things which are revealed. So the revelation or the things which are revealed, hear me everybody in this building. The revelation of the things which are revealed, that's your inheritance. That's your inheritance. And that's what God gives you so you can grow it and give it to the next generation. Wow. Revelation from God's perspective is so important that he even said through the prophet Hosea in Hosea 4 and 6, my people are being destroyed for their lack of revelation. Revelation doesn't come to you and I to make us smarter. It doesn't come to you and I to give us better doctrinal statements. But revelation is first intended to launch you and I into an encounter with God where we understand the power of God, the presence of God, the holiness of God, the nature of God. And we live it out through our daily experience. And if revelation doesn't lead us into a divine encounter with God, then it only serves to make us more religious and more arrogant. Because Paul said that the nature of knowledge, its nature is it puffs up. If we have knowledge without encounter, then our pride will keep us from encountering God. Let me hear that again. Let me say that again. If you have knowledge without encounter, then your pride will keep you from encountering God. Paul had the, wow, he had a lot of knowledge. Oh, but when he was filled with the Holy Spirit, he put, that put everything in perspective, everything in perfect balance. I want to know God now. But not just with head knowledge. I want to know him in the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his suffering. 
He told one church, I'm going to come to you, but I'm not going to come with enticing words of from my knowledge and ability, but in the power and the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. The ones who knew most about God in Jesus' day were his biggest critics, the Pharisees. That's why Jesus said to them in, in John 5 and 39, he said, you search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and these are they which testify of me, but you're not willing to come to me that you might have life. Revelation is the key to spiritual growth because it takes us where we cannot take ourselves. Hit me. Revelation is the key to spiritual growth because it takes us where we cannot take ourselves. Revelation is the key to spiritual growth because it takes me where I cannot take myself. Mm. I need to experience encounters with God because I need signs to take me where I've never been before. I don't need to turn on the GPS when I'm traveling down my street where I live. <laughs> you don't need to turn on the GPS when you get up and go to work tomorrow. You've been doing that same job and driving that same route for over 10 years. You know all about it. You don't need any signs. <sighs> but I hear the Holy Spirit saying, inspire for the last two years. I've been moving in your midst. I've been opening up doors that man cannot close. I've been making you hungry. I've been hearing your prayers. I've been seeing your desires. And I'm taking you where you have never been before. And you're going to do some things that you have never, ever done before. <laughs> if revelation is the key to inheritance, then I have to understand the importance of passing on this encounter this information to my children and to my next generation. So how do we receive the revelation? How do we receive the inheritance? Each of Israel's feasts, there was many of them, but they were built around fast and feasts. Why did God say, I want you to have feasts and fasts, and Passovers? Because he said, his main thing was, I want you to remember where I brought you from. I want you to remember the day when you stood at the Red Sea. And you thought you were going to be destroyed by Pharaoh and his army. Oh, and that I gave you an encounter that you never, ever dreamed of. Because in the natural, it is so impossible. But you, as you stood on the banks of that Red Sea, you watched the waters open up. You crossed on dry land. Pharaoh and his army were drowned and destroyed behind you. I want you to remember that. I want you to gather your children around. I want you to break bread and I want you to tell your children and their children that's their inheritance. <laughs> I want you to tell the stories of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob because there will come a time when they will feel the anointing of that inheritance. that was passed on from the grandmother who they didn't never even know. See, you don't understand this today, but a lot of your blessings has not been your <laughs> ability. A lot of your blessings and prosperity today, you're walking around like you're the biggest, baddest dude in Houston. But you ain't all that. Because what you forgot is that there's been a grandma and a grandpa and an aunt and an uncle that have prayed the blessings of God on you before you were even born because they understand passing on the inheritance to the next generation. Oh, you need to be praising God. You need to be praising God because you need to be acknowledging God right here, right now.
You in the white, come down here right now. That's it. Yes, sweetie, you in the white. Yeah, come down here. Don't be embarrassed. Come on, I'm going to prophesy to you. Come over here. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, woo. light in the darkness. My God. Let me tell you something. Secularism is too cold to produce life. The culture of success is too powerless to produce greatness. My mother raised 19 children in Canada. Y'all know my testimony. That little four foot 10 Pentecostal. My dad, that was nine years old. She never remarried. She worked packed fish. We were poor, poor in the natural. Oh, but we were so rich, rich in the spirit. And I'm just starting to realize now, Bishop, just how rich I really was. I was so focused on what I didn't have in the natural. I wasn't even focused on how blessed I was. <laughs> I'll never forget. This is one of the greatest experiences I ever had with my mother. We had her down visiting us when we lived in Alabama. A little quiet little woman. She was quiet as a mouse. She was an angel. She never hardly said a word. You'd have to talk to get her to talk. She didn't want to do anything that was, she thought, she didn't. Mom, would you want to hold my baby? I'd have to ask her to hold. She loved, but she just wouldn't. She wasn't domineering. She wasn't this. She's so humble. Mom, hold the baby. Hold the baby. Pam and I was in a little kitchen one day, and Mom was sitting at the table. And all of a sudden, I looked, and there was Mom's hand shaking, and her lips were quivering. I stepped over closer and I seen uh, tears in her eyes. And I said, Mom, what are you, what are you, what are you crying for? And she just quietly just whispered, you had to listen. She, oh, I, I just wish I could have, I wish I could have did more for you, Lloyd. I said, Mom. And Pam and I sat down. I picked her up by the chin. I said, look at me. You're wishing you could have did more. Wishing you could have done more. And I once God brought back to my memory. I said, Mom, you worked every day packing fish. <laughs> Just to, we never went without. And when 10 speeds became popular, <laughs> Morton and I bugged the fire out of you. Mom, we need a 10 speed. We don't have it. All our friends got one. And you would say, Boys, you don't understand. I can't afford it. I can't afford it. We, didn't, we did not understand. It didn't register. And we weren't having it. We bugged you for months. And months and months went by. And all of a sudden, Mom, I said, you come in from the fish factory. You ate supper and then you looked at us and said, Lloyd Morton, get in the car. Get in the car. And Joanne, get in the car, my sister. He said, where are we going, Mom? Just be quiet. Just be quiet. We drove 45 minutes up to a little town called St. Stephen, walked into the little Met department store. Mom, where are we going? <laughs> Just follow me. <laughs> we walked back, <laughs> clear back to that tiny little store. <laughs> and we ended up in the bike section. And you looked at us at boys, pick out any 10 speed you want. Oh. I said, Mom, I couldn't believe it. Joanne, my sister, said, come here, boys. She brought Morton and I aside. <laughs> she looked at us. She said, I just want you to know that for the last year, mom has been, after paying the bills, tithing, <laughs> she, 
she's been putting two dollars, five dollars back out of every check, saving to get you boys that ten speed. I said, Mom, that ten speed did not last me six months, because Evil Knievel came became popular. And a demon of Evil Knievel impersonation got a hold of me. And I said, if Evil Knievel can do it, I can do it too. Mom, that 10 speed was not appreciated, was not valued. It was, it's gone today. It's gone. I'll never see it again. But you gave me something so much more valuable. <laughs> I'm alive because of you. I love Jesus because of you. I'm preaching because of you. I'm singing because of you. I'm worshiping Jesus because you have given me inheritance that is incorruptible. You go to church here, hon? Lift your hand, beautiful lady. I'm going to prophesy. Doctor, I'm sorry, but this is what the Lord's doing right now. (laughs) You carrying an incredible anointing the Holy Spirit tells me an incredible anointing you're a giver you're a giver the Lord says the Lord says you love people you're an ambassador for the kingdom of God you're a mother in Zion Wow, you're a soul winner. You're a chain breaker. You're a chain breaker. Huh. You're a prayer warrior. That's what the Lord's saying. She's a prayer warrior. She knows how to pray. Hold on, my shakala basata. Wow, the next six months, God's going to elevate you. God's going to bless you, whatever business or job it is. God's going to bless. God's going to bless. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He's healing your lower spine right now as I speak. Healing bones in your neck right now in Jesus' name. And wow. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Bring it out because if you, if you just let me in there in that prophetic, just see I, when she speaks like that, that let's... That gives me that spiritual channel to come through and connect in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You just have to take it by faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my Lord. My Lord. Doctor, this is a powerful woman here. Powerful woman in the Holy Ghost. And I'm telling you, she's uh, mm, she got wisdom. She got, she got, you're a leader. You're a leader. You're a leader. Hallelujah. 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 Wow. You're going to prophesy to somebody. I don't know what her name is, but it's like... Hallelujah. Uh, what? What? I saw you calling me up here. You did? Yes. Wow. Wow. What a day. This ain't entertainment. You better get this. This is part of your inheritance. You're having an encounter with God. And this is what you're supposed to grow to give to the next generation. You, you got a prophetic anointing that's going to be released over you because there's a, you're, you just got such a love for people. You're going to be blessed financially. I just, I just see your whatever. Are you in business? Just yes or no? Something to do with the air. I see planes flying. Huh? Yes, sir. Well, I'm a nurse in, a nurse in informatics and a travel agent as well. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes. Woo! This ain't psychic, this is prophetic. And this is what the kingdom of God needs, the release of the prophetic, so you can be launched into a greater level. And that's why God is moving in inspired church like he is. 
This is not your normal move. This is a generation of warriors, an army that's rising up. Hallelujah. So I'm releasing the prophetic upon you today. A prophetic will come upon you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're going to prophesy to people. Robert, Roberts, Roberts. Roberts, I know I'm close, but I don't know if it's the first name or last name, but you'll, it's her. It's all lady. My huh? My spiritual mother named Roberts. <laughs> it's so powerful, it's embarrassing. And I mean that. It's very humbling. Is she here? Is Roberts here? Robbie. Robbie? <laughs> okay. I'm getting brave here now. What about Robertson or Robinson? Do you know anybody with that name? Robertson. Who was that? Robertson. Yeah. She's one of my leaders. She's one of your leaders? A nurse. Yeah, she's a nurse leader go to church you're going to prophesy to her because there's three things that God's going to do for her and, and, and the thing about it you got to understand prophecy is not entertainment it's, it's, to, it's to help people, it's to change pe people you understand that <laughs> wow yes yeah you're going to be using special miracles also, because you got such a love for mothers and you got such a love for want to be mothers. And there's people that are, are wanting to be mothers, but they can't. The doctor said it can't be. You lay hands on them and they're going to bring forth children. Uh, wow. I'm staying here. I ain't done. Get your hands up. You can see, the, you understand if what I'm prophesying to her relates to you, you say, that's for me too. That's for me too. You understand? Because I don't have the bandwidth to go to prophesy to everybody. But you can get this too. Oh. <laughs> yes, yes. And you're going to even, wow, get ready for this. This is heavy. But you're going to prophesy to people in government in D.C. D.C. You watch and see. This is going to be powerful. And the Lord says, just like Moses, open up your mouth and I will fill it. And from this day on, God is all the strength of your body, your mind, your soul, and the spirit. And the personal miracle that you've been praying for. Ah, the personal miracle. Whoever Cindy or Sharon or Cindy or something, whoever that is, the Lord's going to give them a double portion. Jesus' name. Take it. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Come on, I'm going to prophesy over you. Get your... This is profound. And you are going to take this. And the people that have even laughed at you will not be laughing no more. Keep your face set like flint because I've called you for a special purpose. A special purpose. <laughs> it's bigger than government. It's bigger than government. That's only the beginning. It's only the beginning. You and your wife are going to write. You're a team. This is so much bigger than government. The government is just a stepping stone. It's just a stepping stone. Because God said, I'm going to teach you. I'm going to show you things beyond government. For instance, and this is what I got this morning. This is heavy. That's why I had to give it to you before I forgot it. But I walked in, put my arms around you this morning during worship. The Spirit of the Lord says, government is for inalienable rights. 
but you're going to teach and give people an alien, inalienable possessions. <laughs> inalienable possessions. Like my mother gave me. I have, government gives me the rights, but my mother, my church, Inspire gave you the inalienable possessions, the stories of Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac. And that's what matters. This move that you are on, this campaign that you are on, it's not just about a right, it's a possession. Babies, it's a possession. Little babies, little babies, it's a possession. It's not about a right, it's a, an alienable possession. Take the glory right now. Take the glory in Jesus' name. Take the glory in Jesus' name. Oh. I'll continue or whatever you want me to do. I'm not going to interrupt the prophetic flow. Uh, I just want to remind you that there are five ways to give. There's something very profound that's happening right now. And uh, there's, there's no way in the world that I'm going to interrupt that. Um, our state representative who is here today happens to, I didn't get a chance to tell you this, that's one of the things that he has been very instrumental in is the rights of the unborn. And uh, I think that is phenomenal. That's, that's amazing. So there are five ways to give. We usually, before the altar service, receive our gifts for our guests. I'm going to ask you to just simply be aware of those. Look up on the screen. And I'm, Lloyd, where are you? Come continue to minister. Anybody willing to stay a little longer? And yeah. And then we're coming back tonight. Lloyd's going to be in the service with us as well. I think that tonight's going to just be off the chain. Come on, don't, don't get in a rush. friends you're with friends say so who is she well is this your friend this is your friend she's a family member and this is her first time here and this is Cindy Robinson <laughs> well you know what that means that, that, that means that you gotta you gotta remember that God loves you you're not alone you've gone through some tragedies but God loves you. And all you have to do is just, just receive. You don't have to do any work. You don't have to do anything. You just got to receive. Now, how about if I told you within three days, you was going to see just an incredible shift from depression and un to, to joy and peace. Would you believe that? Would you believe it? Ah. It's all over. Devil's work is all over. The windows of heaven is opening up. God's going to bless you abundantly above all you ask or think. And this is for everybody who says, I need that too. I need that too. Get your hands up and receive it. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Give her a hug. Come on, let's give God praise. That's beautiful. Yeah. That is who you are. 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 That is who you
That is who you are. God says I'm healing somebody named Kathy. I don't know where you are, but and I know it's a general name, but I'm healing somebody and there's a P. There's a P in your last name, the Lord says. I don't know where you are, but there's a P like pony in your last name. So get up, wave to me wherever you are. I'm not going to wait because these things are downloading in the spirit. What's your name, huh? Wow, Kathy Thompson. Lift your hands. From this day on, every joint, all your blood is healed in the name of Jesus. Even the pain that comes in your head is gone in Jesus' name. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. Take it in Jesus' name. That is who you are. In alienable possessions. Don't ever forget that. That is who you are. That is who you are. You know anybody named Sasha? You know anybody named Sasha? You know anybody named, you know anybody named Sasha? I'm just digging, I'm digging, I'm digging. Yes or no? Huh? Where are they at? They go to church? Well, they should have been here today. I just follow God. I can't, I can't explain it, so don't get mad at me. I can't explain it, and I'm not even going to defend it. I just... Well, you're going to prophesy to them. You're going to prophesy. You're not just going to train. You're going to prophesy. Prophesy. The Lord says for you to prophesy, not just train. Just prophesy. Because you're going to bring people out of poverty, bring them out of... <sighs> now, whoever this... Are they married? Yes. Whoever they are, you married them. Wow. That's... <laughs> It's freaky sometimes, but it's a good freaky. Okay? Oh, that is who you are. I wanted to prophesy to your granddaughter, Latchlin or Lucklin or somebody. Scotland? Is she here? Yeah. Well, where's she at? I need to see you. Come on down here, sweetheart. I'm going to prophesy to you. So here's the thing. Okay. He's got a lot of en energy, but he's got to channel the energy, the Lord says. Right? Yeah. Little ADHD or something going on there, right? But he's got a strong calling on his life. He's got a lot of great potential. <laughs> and that's what God's doing in this whole audience. See, remember what I said, and this is why I have to keep stressing this. When I prophesy to one, if you say, well, that's me, well, then you can receive it too. Amen? Hallelujah. It's, it's, but you're going you're gonna to dig them out because they're going to, they're going to, his future is so bright and I prophesy to him, but for everybody who wants to receive it, he's got a financial anointing upon him. He's got a wealth anointing. Is that right? Okay. But you need to be kind of, you know, speak up like a daddy sometimes. Does that make sense? Okay. Jesus' name. Okay, so I see colors. Colors. Just He likes colors. Colors. Hallelujah. And, and the Spirit of the Lord says, I'm 
I don't know if they have children. That's why, because God's God, I'm not. But if they have children, do they have children? <sighs> okay, if they, what? She has a daughter. Well, that's children. <laughs> no, that's a child. <sighs> yes. There's going to be, well, there is such a revival among the youth here. And that's what I'm feeling here. So strong. Just so strong. I just sense thousands of children. It's not, the Lord says, expand your tents, expand your horizons. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. The Lord says, I'm gonna, you're going you're gonna to lay hands on them and you're going to bless them in Jesus' name. And their life is going to come in more in sync. Okay, they're going to come in more in sync. And the child, the child is going to dance. I see the child dancing. She's very limber. Little skinny little thing, very limber. <sighs> She's going to excel. Your children are going to excel. Limber in the Holy Spirit. So limber in the Holy Spirit. So limber. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. I got to prophesy out of you. Lift your hands. Ah, it's a pleasure to meet you. You're very important to God. You're very important to God. Mm. Yes. It's going to be beautiful the next two years for you. It's going to be beautiful. Don't look back. Don't look back. <laughs> Don't look back. Because it's going to be so beautiful. You're going to excel beyond your years. Start praying about writing. Start praying about writing. God's given you that gift. You're a leader. You're a leader, and God has blessed you with a boldness that says, I don't care what people think now. I'm going for Jesus. And that's what God wants. That's what God wants. You got royal blood. Just enjoy God. Stay hungry. Stay hungry. Stay in this altar as much as you can. Because you're a worshiper. You're a worshiper. Don't even settle back. Don't settle back. Because that's what the enemy wants you to do. Stay radical. Stay radical. Does that make sense? Hallelujah. You're going to win so many souls. You're a gatherer, the Lord says. You're going to gather. And when you get 50, you'll be that big mother hen. Well, it won't be the big mother hen, but you'll be a great mother hen. And you'll gather so many chicks under you. But today, I just give you the prophetic anointing of your future. And it's in sync. And the Lord says, this is your inheritance Work it, grow it, because you're going to pass it on. Thank you for the glory. Just give it to her right now. It's done. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you. That's so beautiful. Oh, Lord says, stay at the foot of my cross. Stay at my feet. And soak in my presence. <laughs> Stay praying. Because your future is brighter than the brightest star. It's done. Yeah. Don't be intimidated with anybody. Don't try to be like anybody. Be yourself. Worshipper. Angelic. Angelic worshipper. Your worship is not stained. Your worship is glorious. Did you hear what I said? Your worship is not secondhand. It's not used. It's not stained. It's glorious. It's pure. He loves it. 
Nobody belongs in the presence of God more than you. Nobody. Nobody's better than you. Ah. You will deliver so many young people from their negative heredity. Their negative heredity. You will break curses off of people. Because there are so many people that's got tainted DNA spiritually, mentally, and emotionally in them. You're going to break that. God's going to give you a revelation. You're going to write about it. And you're just going to break it. Do you understand that? Whew. Go forth like Esther. Because God is preparing you for such a time like this. I wonder if I gave an altar call. I wonder if I gave an altar call. I wonder how many people would respond. Hmm. Oh, I just got to follow God. Father, I thank you for the financial miracles that are coming to inspire church. I thank you for the heart of this leadership. They could say, oh no, we've got enough parking. We've got enough. We, got it. we don't need any more. But God, they see the future. They see the future. And it's thousands upon thousands. So I want to thank God for taking the burden off of you. Taking the burden off of you. That burden you're carrying, that God, we're taking steps of faith. We're trying our best to be good stewards. The Lord says, yes, yes, he understands that. But the Lord said, I'm going to bless you abundantly. I'm going to send miracle offerings for that parking lot. I'm going to send miracle offerings and things will even be expedited. You won't have to worry. So Lord, I just thank you for the miracle offerings from businesses businesses that are going to be blessed I, I speak five hundred thousand dollars million dollar miracles offerings because of the <laughs> oh the greatest products of civilization have come out of the church the greatest products of civilization that come out of the church. I want to go on, but I'm not. I'm going to give an altar call right now. we got to come back at 6 o'clock. I want you to stand with me right now, if you will. All these beautiful people. These beautiful people. You say, what are they here for? Well, they're waiting for the lost to come. The hurting to come. In the first service, the Holy Spirit spoke to me, and I've never did this before, but he said, I'm going to heal people of PTSD today. I can't tell you how many people that walked down to the altar that was tormented by PTSD. So I want everybody that has been bothered and bound by PTSD Maybe military, maybe an accident. <laughs> but the Lord said, this is your day to be healed. So when I call, when I ask you to come, I don't care if this is your first time here, or your second or third or fourth. I want you to leave your seat. I don't want you to be embarrassed. I don't want you to feel out of place. I want you to come. That's what we're doing this for. If you say, well, Lloyd, I'm here and I'm not saved. Well, I, this is your day to get saved. You say, well, Lloyd, I'm here. I'm a father. I'm a mother. And your sermon really touched me about inheritance. I, I've got a, I've been so concerned with saving the college fund that I forgot about the spiritual inheritance for my children. I want you to come. So I want every first time guest. I would love to be able to pray blessings over you today. So I want you to come. If you say, I've been suffering, the doctors have given me up to die, I want you to come. If you want to be saved, if you've never received the gift of the Holy Spirit, I want you to come. I want you to come. Start coming right now. 
all over the building, up in the bleachers. Don't be embarrassed. Don't st just come on, come on, come on. Oh, that's so beautiful. Look at them coming. Come on, take your family down here. Say, come on, wife, we gotta get saved today. I believe in God, but I need to surrender to God. Father and this family, is my day. Thank you guys for joining us this, this morning in worship. Uh, the Spirit of the Lord was truly in this place this morning. Thank Prophet Lloyd Buster for allowing God to speak in and through him. What a mighty move of God this morning. If you guys are new here, scan the QR code on screen, text the on screen number, and get engaged with Inspired Church this morning. Uh, also, check it out. You can receive a free daily devotion from our Dr. Heard by texting the on screen number or scanning the QR code and receive a word from God every morning from Dr. Heard. And also, if you need prayer, if you need salvation, or you want to have baptism, uh, please scan the QR code or text the on screen number once again. Uh, thank you guys for joining us once again. Don't forget, we have two o'clock service is coming up for Spanish worship. Be there. Worship God in Spanish. It's amazing. It's wonderful. It's terrific. Also, tonight we have Worship Encounter at 6 o'clock p.m. You don't want to miss it. We're going to have a great time in the Lord on tonight. I would love to see you there. Come meet your boy there. I will be there. I would love to see you there as well. Can we go into prayer as you guys go into a blessed week? Amen. Let us go. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for the word of God this morning, Father. We thank you, Lord God, for just the prof prophecy spoken by Prophet Lloyd Buster, Lord God. We receive it, Father God, upon good ground, Lord God. Bless every family, God. Bless every husband, every wife, Father, every child throughout the entire week, Lord God. Father God, just pour out your blessings and your favor, God, upon us, Lord God. And let there be breakthroughs and miracles and signs and wonders, God, that take place every day of our life, Lord God. Give us a hunger and a thirst to pursue after your righteousness, God, to be where you are, Father God. And Lord God, we just thank you for the miracles right now. We thank you for the healing right now, God. We thank you for the breakthrough right now, Lord God. It is in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. You guys have a blessed week. See you guys next week. Love you guys.